The NIST Cybersecurity Framework 2.0 is designed to help organizations of all sizes and sectors to manage and reduce cybersecurity risks. Let's have a brief look at cybersecurity risk management to help you better understand how the CSF can support you in protecting your organization. Now, all organizations, from large multinational corporations to small and medium-sized businesses, face a broad array of risks. Risk is sometimes considered as the effect of uncertainty on objectives. Now, organizations usually serve a clear purpose as expressed by their business vision and mission. Risks that have an adverse effect on them are often considered as enterprise risks. There are different types of enterprise risks, including but not limited to cybersecurity risks, privacy risks, legal and financial risks, as well as operational risks and reputational risks. Organizations need to identify, analyze and respond to their risks in order to secure their operations and fulfill their mission. So every risk is always an enterprise risk. Because in the end, an organization wants to achieve their mission and fulfill their business purpose. So everything that threatens an organization in achieving this is considered a risk. As I said in the very beginning, the NIST cybersecurity framework was designed to help organizations to manage and reduce their cybersecurity risks. Please note that there is some overlap between cybersecurity and privacy risks. So the implementation of the CSF can have a positive effect on privacy risks as well. Let's use this graphic to have a look at the fundamental concepts of cybersecurity risk management. As we know from the previous lecture, a threat that exploits the vulnerability of an asset is called a risk. Threats don't come out of nowhere. Threat sources impose threat events. They can be divided into adversarial and non-adversarial. Adversarial threat sources actively seek to exploit vulnerabilities for malicious purposes, such as hackers, cyber criminals, or nation states engaging in espionage or sabotage. They often use various tactics, techniques, and procedures to preach security measures. Non-adversarial threat sources, on the other hand, do not intend harm but can still cause significant damage. These include human errors, system malfunctions, and natural disasters that inadvertently exploit vulnerabilities in information systems, leading to potential security breaches or data loss. Now, threat sources impose threat events, for example, the installation of malware via mail attachments. By doing so, threats seek to exploit the vulnerabilities of an organization's assets. Vulnerabilities are the weak spots in our information systems and controls where threat sources can potentially gain unauthorized access or cause damage. These can range from software flaws and outdated systems to human errors and inadequate security policies. A risk describes a possible adverse event that could happen. When risks materialize, that means they happen, we no longer talk about risks but security events or incidents. Managing these incidents involves identifying, responding to, and recovering from them to minimize their impact and restore normal operations. Now the question is, what can we do to protect organizations from adversaries and secure their operations? The answer is by implementing security controls. Controls act as safeguards or countermeasures to manage risks detect and respond to events and incidents, and maintain the integrity, confidentiality, and availability of information systems. Controls can be categorized into preventive, detective, and corrective controls. Preventive controls aim to deter threats and mitigate vulnerabilities. Let's say you install a CCTV, so a video surveillance system, in front of your office building. The pure presence of surveillance cameras might already be enough to deter adversaries from trying to enter your facility. Establishing a set of procedures or applying a secure baseline configuration to an IT system are other examples of preventive controls that mitigate vulnerabilities and therefore protect an organization's assets. Detective controls are aimed at detecting and alerting when an unauthorized or unwanted activity occurs. 
They don't prevent an action, but can trigger an alert or initiate corrective measures. An example would be an intrusion detection system that notifies administrators about suspicious activities. Typical example for a detective control. Now, corrective controls come into play after a threat event has occurred, aiming to minimize the impact and bring the systems back to its secure state. Data backups and system recovery plans are common examples of corrective controls. All right, this was just, of course, a scratch on the surface of cybersecurity risk management. Now, if you require more information on that topic, I'll link a couple of resources to this lecture to help you learn more.